Welcome back to Wellington, New Zealand. My name is Dave Mengen. I am happy to be here with you for the bronze medal match. It is Brazil against Germany. Grant Sherman, you're with me today. Look. What do you see coming? I think this is really the final because the two teams in the gold, silver medal uh, game, look, they're going to, to Paris, right? They'll be, who knows what they'll do in that other than playing for pride. This here, it's all on the line. We've got the German precision, um, the way they operate against that Latino flair. You know, what's going to happen? I'm not sure they know, but it'll be exciting. So how does Germany uh, counter that? And if we use the football analogy, the great German sides against the Brazilian sides, it's all here. It's going to be a cracker. Well, it, it certainly built that way. The, I've talked to several people before the game, uh, differing opinions on who might win it. So we expect a close match. And again, somebody comes home with not just a bronze medal, but a ticket to Paris. The other team goes home with neither. And that's, they, that's why they're here. They came all this way to get that ticket to Paris. But the other thing we need to, to realize here is that the Brazilian side is on that upward trajectory. You know, they have a plan. Benoit, very experienced coach on where he wants to be. He's ahead of that curve. And Germany... They need to be a little bit worried. And, and on their game, if they don't bring their A game, I think the Brazilians are going to give them a lesson. But I think it'll be close. I think less than maybe three points. It is a confidence boost, right? They, their plan was try to make it in uh, Los Angeles, you know, four years from now. So let's go down to the coach interviews, and we'll get back to the game. Christoph, this is the one. Winner takes the prize. Yeah, uh this is the game we won uh, from the beginning. Yeah, uh, we were thinking about New Zealand, but now it is Brazil. Will be a game with two teams on the same level, so will be interesting for the uh, visitors. Yeah, but will be hard uh, for each team. Yeah. And Brazil, players to watch out for. Yeah, uh, uh, Brazil is playing with a lot of power, with a lot of speed. Yeah, it's uh, very impressive. Yeah, so. Uh, we will see what we can do against uh, that speed. So, Well, good luck. Wiedersehen. Thank you very yeah. much. Great stuff. And now well, let's uh, talk with somebody from Brazil. Benoit, this is the one, the big prize? Yes, it's uh, the one because uh, it's a qualification for Paralympic. Uh, we uh, expected to play Germany uh, for the last spot in Paris. Uh, we played well against them the last three months. That's, we will see if we are able to reproduce what we did in the last three months. And uh, expectations from this, from Germany, what do you expect them to bring? Uh, it's, again, I will say I'm focused on my, my team. It's really important that we are doing the right thing. Uh, for us, it, uh, it doesn't really matter who we play against. It's more like focusing on the right thing and uh, do the right stuff in our team. And, we look for a good a good win. Well, good luck, Merci. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that was Benoit Lebrac, citizen of the world, rugby coach. Look, he is a wily old fox. He'll have planned and schemed and got his plans going. Interesting though, he has to work through an interpreter, so that's another layer of difficulty. But he'll be well and truly able to do this. And watch out for some Benoit specials. The, the German team, I think, they'll absolutely have a plan. Let's sit back and enjoy, people. So Faye Tosa, number seven from Brazil, lines up against Marco Herbst from Germany in the circle. And based on where all the, all the players are, they expect Faye Tosa to win that tip. But we'll, we'll see. It doesn't always go straight up and down. Here is the tip, and we've started in this bronze medal match. Brazil wins the tip, and Faye Tosa gets the first try. Look, it was interesting in the build-up when the teams did their cheer. The Brazilians were really fired up. They pounded the ball in. There's a ton of energy there. They've come to play. And as you were talking about earlier, they're, they're ahead of their developmental schedule looking toward 
going to the Olympics in Los Angeles in 2028. They want that ticket. They're, they're going to work for it. Interesting, we have a female player on for Jimmy number seven, so they'll be able to play an extra half point more. Let's see if that makes a difference. And for those of you who don't know much about the sport, each player gets a classification between three and a half and half a point. And the total number of points based on their physical abilities can be no more than eight, unless you have an uh, exception because you have a female on the court, you get half one. Oh, look at the pressure being exerted there by Brazil. They, they've come with real energy here, and they're not going to take any uh, of the planning that Germany's uh, put into this. Quick inbound. German, a more balanced line, and uh, certainly a more patient offensive team. But you can see the intensity of Brazil is already paying off. I think we can see, too, that the... the the German team have got a very precise way of progressing the ball up the court. When they do that right, they're going to score every time. What they need to be aware of is how Brazil can transition very fast and upset that pattern. And you're going to see that all day. Feitosa is definitely the fastest guy on the floor right now. Love to say I was that fast in my day, but uh, nope. Milky passes it over. Cross half. Much like basketball, once you cross the half court line, you cannot go back into the back court. Nice pass. Braz there to hit. Herbst from the back, but not able to stop him. Braz number 11 for Brazil. And now Germany's turned the tables. They've come down. They're looking to press them, put pressure on. That long ball to the 3-5, though, very, very, very hard to That was defend. close. Close to that sideline, kind of a no-look pass. He knew his guy was there. Uh, Braz was able to catch it before it went out of bounds. Back to that low point inbound does make me a little nervous. And the inbounder will be scoring the try. Lovely long pass, good cohesion, good teamwork. They understand where they need to be and what they need to do. That number eight is Vecchi for Germany. Feitosa looking for a pick to get out. Gives it to Braz. He's off. Somehow Germany needs to shut down that high option and would do what I would say is get the ball to the weaker hands. But that's easier said than done. Milky coming down court. Kripke sets the pick. You know, there was, there was a bit of danger in that pass. It went, but I'd like to see a bit more space, a bit more accuracy. And again, they forced, they've got a low, low point inbound for the Brazilians. So the call was, was that contact before the whistle? I didn't see him go over to the box, so I don't, no, I I think don't know if they gave a, it to him. I know not, they have equipment, but. Yeah, I think it was did, just equipment. He did, uh, seemed like he gave that signal. Up again over the top. This time Braz to Fade Tosa. So I wonder now if, if Germany could go right. He, you know, Tentosa's really taking off. Why don't we go down and just key up and let's just test their key attack and see what it's like. So Brazil set up in the key. The key is that white area between the cones. Germany runs a play into the middle. So we've seen the four fingers go up. You're only allowed as a defending team to have three players in that white box. If a fourth player goes in, sometimes they'll uh, award the try, which they've done. Either way, it's a penalty. Can't have four defenders in the box. Beatosa gets around Vilki. He's got bras, but he will take it home himself. A little fake pass. 
threw the defense away long enough for him to sneak by. And you really get to see just the benefit of that trunk function, the ability to turn it well at speed, very difficult. Oh, oh. close one there, Vilky got it. I think the crowd, with nice little crowd building up, gave a collective ooh then when that went through, great to see. We have fans from both teams despite the great distance they both came. And look, if you're in the lower hut area, come on down. You're going to see some world-class wheelchair rugby. Doesn't come to New Zealand very often. Don't miss out the opportunity. We have two other great games coming up. Yeah, you've got to come and see the New Zealanders. There'll be a rematch against uh, the Netherlands. That should be an absolute ripper. That's our next one. And then the final, Australia-Canada, both who earned tickets to the Paris Paralympics coming in August. Herbst finds his way around the corner. Egan Kauto. You don't see that very often at this level where the low point would bunt the ball. So limited function, knew there was a fast player, just bunted up high, no defenders, pretty safe maneuver. And it looks like Braz went down. I didn't see it. I think they might be calling a spin it. here. Let's see what happened. No, that's just no, a good hit. So. He yeah. just got hit in the front, came over. Nothing to see here. Just going to inbound from the side. No blood, no foul. <laughs> well, you know, everyone loves to see a little bit of blood. I mean, for goodness sake, it's people with disabilities beating the crap out of each other. It's fantastic. But just as you were saying, this it seems that Germany is playing at a much more managed pace, and the Brazil's Brazilian team is much more frantic in their both their offense and their defense. So we're seeing the different styles, and look, Germany will just plug away, plug away, plug away. They'll be consistent. You won't see much of the flashy stuff, and they'll wait for those mistakes. Just the one turnover so far in this game. Backing across. And that really is a textbook play. Just so for people out there watching and not familiar with what's uh, how the game is played, when teams attack the key like that, they tr practice this over and over and over again. Each player knows where they need to be. It's what we would call cat and mouse, finding the gaps. Where are they? Kripke unable to get that pick in. Vilke has the ball, and they're going to call that a held ball. So the possession arrow in favor of Germany will flip that arrow. So they'll keep the ball, but now they lose the chance at possession of the, the first possession of the second quarter. And the Brazilians have done it with no cost of themselves because Germany had the ball progressing. So scoring last at the end of each quarter can be absolutely critical in these big must-win games. The Brazilians now will look to maintain control, not give that away. Wilkie's stuck. And it'll be Herbst after going in there trying to pound the defender across the line. You cannot cross the active try line, no matter what team you're on, unless you have the ball. What was interesting there, though, was that Germany had a plan B. Went to the first person, wasn't there, the next person was free, they knew they'd be there, flipped the pass over, try scored. Herbst bringing it up. He's got Vilke. Nice job working with his teammate there and manipulating the defender. So Brazilian run, two high pointers, two low pointers. The two high pointers will do most of the, the heavy lifting in terms of speed, etc. But the low pointers are critical in defense and critical for setting up picks and disrupting the opposition. Herbst looking for somewhere to go with the ball. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not Herbst. 
Cripps tried to catch it. So we have the first real mistake of the game. That pressure has paid off. We have the turnover. If they can convert that, that'll give them a, a three-point lead with the arrow. This could be a significant play in the first quarter. Corner not there. And pushed into the cone. Got the timeout. He called timeout. That cone is technically out of bounds, so if it moves before your two wheels cross the line. So I would say right now, Benoit's blood pressure has got up ever so slightly. They've done the hard, hard work. They've caused the turnover, so they've gained, gained possession, and then they basically give it away. And, and I wonder sometimes when they get their turnover, a team gets a turnover, just pull away. You've still got the 40 seconds to score. Pull away, just rest, just relax. Set it up as though it was your original ball and then score the goal. Turnover, turnover is an absolute coach killer. There is some false sense of urgency when you get a turnover to take advantage of that opportunity. And too often we see that. That's where those uh, sports psychologists, the Ashley Lights of the world really come into it. Braz is calling for help. He has equipment. That's really interesting because technically the ball was uh, beyond the play. I'm so, there'll be some referees who go, nope, sorry, the ball is away from you. There's no danger. Huh. Too bad. So The German player ripped that belt off when he was going for the ball, I yeah. think. And look, if you think wheelchair rugby, there's no little sly tactics, sneaky tricks, think again. You know, <laughs> wheelchair rugby players are no different from any other sport. If there's a, an advantage, a way to do things, maybe the referees don't see it. If you think we're not going to do it, you're dreaming. Looks like that strap may be broken. This, this could be a, a, a big problem because well, if that strap is broken. He has 60 seconds. I'm sure they have parts to replace it. They have 60 seconds for the equipment timeout. And then they can call a bench timeout, a coach's timeout. Gives him time. You can see he's putting on the screw for the new strap. Again, a big shout out to the mechanics and those staff that do this. Sometimes their ability to make things happen, to fix things up, is as critical as having a, a, a world-class player. Uh, and so, and it's a, it's a bit of a hard, thankless job in some cases. So big shout out to all the bench staff that make it happen. Thank you very much. Well, just think how that would change the lineup of Brazil if Braz were not able to be out there. So one of the things that coaches will do uh, is they'll run what-if scenarios. They'll look and they'll say, well, if our top player has to come off, who comes next and how does that work? Including specialty plays with 10, 15, 20 seconds on the clock. You run through these scenarios. What if this happens? What if that happens? What are we going to do? And it's the teams that really drill that and understand it instinctively that get that edge over the other side. So Brazil coming back after that coach's timeout. Each team gets two of those. They last a minute. There are four floor timeouts, which are basically get out of jail free cards. Help save you from a turnover. So now Brazil on the attack. Feitosa tries to squeeze into the key so he can catch a pass. Braz gets around the corner. Nice job by Wiersma to seal that. And that's his try. He did exactly what he needed to do. Provided the opportunity. Go the low pointers. Braz had to force the pass there. He's not going to turn it over if you don't make him take it out of his lap. So we have that two-point lead now to Brazil. Two minutes on the clock. They'll be starting to think about clock management, clock management as to how they run the last couple of minutes down, who scores when. Brazil scoring a lot easier tries. The defense showed, though, that the Germans are not going to throw in the towel here. They're no. going to defend hard. But this could be a problem. Kripke takes one from behind. Able to get it back. Vecchi to Wilkie back to Herbst 
Again, they'll move around. It's like pawns on a chessboard. How can they move around? Where's the gap? Down the gap. Well, those are pickers are useful. They're also, they also swing like gates. Yep. So will he slow this down and score with about 55 on the clock? And just sort of see, he's looked over. Benoit's given the signal. Nope, score it. Obviously confident that there's another turnover out there for him. The defense has created two turnovers already. And there it is. There's another timeout called. So you only well, have 10 seconds to inbound that ball. It has to touch a player. And he didn't have time to do it. So Benoit was right, no, encouraged him to press near the end of the quarter. How can we disrupt? And again, not going to key up, so the, the shot clock will start soon. 40 seconds to go. Maintain that pressure. If we look at the arrow, it is favoring Brazil. That means they will start the second quarter, which should be a, a point, a, a try, automatic to them. Well, it's automatic uh, in terms of the flow of the game. Which is why they, it's to their benefit to score the last try of this quarter. Just two Absolutely. points. You either you're evening out or you're, you're gaining. Absolutely. So. First and last, there's eight of them. Nice catch by Herbs. He's trying to get it up to Kripke, who bobbles it. Vecchi fighting Feitosa, Braz. Ball's been up and down a couple of times. And now Herbst has it and will get the foul. Fantosa reaching in there trying to pull that ball out. Aggressive play. I think this is a lot like wheelchair rugby scrums. Does anyone really know what goes on in there? Uh, but the ref sees what the ref sees. Made the call. It almost looks like Fantosa and Braz were fighting over the ball at one point where one of them could have pulled it up. Exactly. And, and not communicating to each other allowed Herbst to get back in there and get that ball. I think what we're seeing there is perhaps the inexperience at, at these high-level must-win games, whereas Germany has, has a taste of that. This is probably new territory to Brazil, and it's just part of the learning curve. Look, they're winding down the clock. I'm not sure that was the smartest play because now Brazil can wind the, the shot clock down and score last. But anyway. Yeah, I was wondering that myself. Quick inbound. Give and go. Feitosa forced to inbound. Now what's Bernard want him to do? Does he want to score? Or just hold off? Looks like score. Well, this is interesting. So I'm very surprised they didn't run the clock down because in theory... Germany could score last now, and that's not really what BMI wanted. Well, maybe he has that confidence in his defense. Absolutely. It's They've been be... playing well. Germany certainly working a little harder. Feitosa gets up there. Herbst works the corner. Vilki tries to open it for him. Can't. Herbst now stuck between two Brazilian players. And nice pass to Vecchi who will go across with 2.8 seconds don't think that means they can't score here true but I, you know I just think that was a bit of a blunder having said that so now it's reversed because the ball wasn't touched the clock didn't start and so the ball comes all the way back to where it was inbounded but the corner and it's not Bra uncommon to see a team set up Braz maybe had a shot at that. Yeah, maybe put a specialty team out there where they can set up, score the goal, draw the foul, cause the timeout. Whistle has not been blown. You can't push him out. Technically, that's contact before the whistle. Technically, it should be a warning. First warning, you're allowed uh, one warning per half. Wow, what a great play. He just kind of snuck around the top of that pile. Didn't look like he was in any hurry. So if we can get a nice close-up on Benoit now, I think we'll see. Oh, he's shaking his head. That is a big, big turnover. So now we go into the quarter, 17-16, Brazil still with the lead. I think I'm, I'm, 
I've got to put a bit of blame there on Benoit. I'm sure he indicated, no, don't, you know, you know, score it now, when really they should have been coming out, and they, they shouldn't need a coach to tell them that. They should be able to figure that out on court. No, let's run it down. There's 23 seconds left. Just run that down, run that down, run that down, score last, job done, score first, second quarter. There they have, two points for nothing. But it sets it up for a great second quarter. Well, so far this is living up to its build-up. So a uh, television break for commercials. Got two minutes. Looking to start the quarter. And then with the three minute break, the teams had an opportunity to talk about what was happening, develop some strategy here. And again, as we said earlier, Brazil will start with the ball. They take Great. advantage of that opportunity. Yeah, look, they had a real opportunity in Brazil to go three points up um, and because they would have had a, the last to score. But that's it. That's in the past now. Let's focus on this. We've got a turn over here. It's a live ball on the floor. Faye Tosa reaches for it. Oh. Germany able to retain possession. Eight seconds of the 40-second shot clock gone, and they're right in their very corner. A very difficult place to inbound from. Gets the inbound to Kripke. She is trapped in that pile. Hands back to Herbst, who's also trapped. And they're going to have to spend a timeout. And, and still be in the same position. So. And now the shot clock down 17 seconds. Yeah, they exactly. only have 23 left. So they're going to have to come up with a plan. So when a time takes a team out, the opposing side can't go closer than halfway lengthwise with the court and the halfway. They need to give them space to have their conversation, do what they've got to do, then come on court. And you'll see their position ready for it. So some teams will break out so they can get out of that uh, net that the opposition will set up. And we can see number one up high for Germany. 11 from Brazil on him. Some great one-on-one -on -one action. And now you saw Kripke call for the inbound, and Feitosa is trying to cover Vilki, number five. And he used that pick to get as close as he could. What's really important here is chair position. Those high pointers have no pick bars, so it's about getting their chair in front of the other person's chair completely. Nice job there by Herbst to use his chair. 
and push the faster bras around the outside so he could get across half. They're working very well together in terms of progressing the ball up. That was a nice job. Back to a low point inbound. And Braz tries to pick back so that he can be the first one there, and it costs him. And, and that try, or that turnover, put that down to number five, the uh, .51, because it held Braz back just enough that he couldn't run with it. That's how not to bunt the ball up court. Even if he'd caught that ball, he'd have been out of bounds. He'd have been out of bounds. So like a turtle flipped over, and we get right back to it. Germany with the chance to tie it up for the very first time since tip-off. So this is where psychology starts to kick in. The Brazilians were looking good, potentially three up. Now the scores are, the, are level. Who's going to hold that, maintain their composure? What's Brazil going to do? How are they going to respond to this? And will Germany ratchet up the pressure? Big pile off to the left. Now Brazil has to spend a timeout on the inbound. So what does Benoit say to them? How does he calm them down? Remember, he's doing this through a translator. He's got to articulate what he wants them to do well, clearly, so they take it on board. He's got to pick them up and go, look, we had these guys. We've got them again if we need to. It's up to us. Germany had definitely had the momentum with them. So Faye Tosa up at half court. Ball into Braz. And they're going back to basics. This you, is what's worked for him so far. And you can't defend against that. It's almost impossible to defend. Yeah, Germany's going to have to find an answer to that. And I think their answer is to try and keep Faye Tosa from getting over the top at all. The secret there is keep that really low. quick transition. Oh, lovely, lovely pick, lovely uh, pick and roll. Oof. Just so quick recovering from that hit. Faye Tosa gets right back into the play, but Germany working together to get that across. That was a full team effort. Faye Tosa launches. So we heard the, the shout, gave a little, some kind of signal. Boom, the ball went high, he knew he was safe. Ball went long, probably three, four seconds tops. The speed difference is gonna, is gonna be the thing that you're gonna see Brazil lean on a lot. So I wonder where fitness comes in here because neither side looks as though they particularly wanna change their lineup. Let's see where fitness comes in here. Beethoven stops the forward progress of Vecchi and a turnover. So now we see a momentum shift back. Brazil, they're, they're, they're confidence players, their tails are up. They know they can do it. What is Germany going to respond with? Kripke now inbounding. Braz has a flat tire, but as long as the ball keeps advancing toward the try line, they will not stop the play. And now both high pointers for Brazil need some help. And look, don't tell me you don't come to the sport to see a bit of that. It's fantastic. By and large, they're pretty safe. They're not going to get too badly injured. You get the odd head knock every now and then, a broken finger. But in the context of it, yeah, it's nothing. As you can see, Feitosa right back to action. Interesting, they, he got together with Braz, and they dove down together seeing who could get down to the ball. Again, the speed advantage is a, is a really big advantage. So I've wondered, maybe one of the tactics that Germany need to adopt is to double team the two highs with a high and a low and allow the ball to go back to uh, a low point give and go inbound and then drop down and swarm on them. Let's try that up and see what happens.
perish the thought, but nearly it's very possible when uh, low pointers receive the ball that things go wrong. Not always, but that's where your probab probability is of getting change. Put the ball in the weakest hands, apply pressure, and expect the results. Kripke with a wheel swap, and she'll get back down to inbound. 22 20, our score. Dave, you've got to love it. Now comes the mechanic with the big roll of tape. You know you're in trouble when the roll of tape comes out. That is a big roll of tape. That is a very big roll of tape. You're not going to get that at Mitre 10 Mega. So that is going round his stump to protect it and his gloves. So the amount of pressure that goes on stumps and hands that they've got with fingers missing is, is immense. They need that protection. Milky got it in to Vecchi. And Herbst takes it across for their 21st try. So off camera, the two low pointers from Brazil had tied up the two pointer for Germany. And that was as then caused a three on two, but they're backing their three fives to uh, take the three German players out of circulation. Roz catches that, spins, gets out of it. Feitosa tried to go up top. That is likely a spin. Why do we do that? Well, I mean, no, I mean, why do we call a spin? Well, we call a spin. So if, so if you look closely there, the German player, the, defend, the defender, hit the uh, offensive player behind the axle. Despite the rough and tumble, there are certain safety regulations. You don't smash someone hard from, the, from behind, and you don't hit them behind the axle because there's a real risk of serious injury. The minute that happens, they're going to call a spinning foul, and someone is in the bin. Well, and as you just saw, he went down spinning. And you don't know which way is up, which way is the floor. That can be dangerous. So, so she'll spend a minute in the box, or she will come out if Brazil scores a try. And with a man advantage, that shouldn't be too complicated. Well, I'd be sure about this trapping the player in the bin. I've heard some suggestions that maybe we change. She's inbounding. Yeah. Why but would you trap her? Exactly. Maybe we change the rules that a 20 second must stay off and then come on with none of this other nonsense. I don't know, always looking for ways to speed the game up. And she calls them better. Well, the difference is though, is that the mid-range player for Germany is being trapped by the two lows. And now, where is she gonna to pass to? Because there's two highs on two um, of the higher German players. Where are we gonna go here? He's gonna look for the screen, but now he's on his own, one-on-one. -on -one. Let's watch these big boys go. Fast enough to beat, get to half court. That's all he needed to do. Now he's got 27 seconds. Although that is a tough pass to make over the top of Braz. Very well worked goal there. A try, I should say. Herbst with the try. So one of the other things that the Germans can do is keep the high point as low because you've got a low point inbound. If you can keep them high, you're putting real pressure on the low point inbound. Braz just flips it over, hoping that Feitosa could get there first. Does not. Dave, I believe we call that a Hail Mary pass. <laughs> well, usually a Hail Mary is thrown as far as you can. I don't think that had enough mustard on it for Beatosa to be the first one there. If it had, if it had gone further down court, he would have beaten Vilky. Yeah. Vilky no slouch himself. He's a quick two for Germany. And the bump pass over the top. Vilky unable to reach it and Braz. We'll put Brazil back on top, 24-23. Just a one-point difference as far as Brazil is concerned. Germany just won't go away. They keep coming back, they keep coming back. And, th and this is the nature of this game. It's going to be a very close game. I'm, I'm picking at least a 
you know, almost a one-point game. We're at the halfway point of this second quarter. Very simple try scored by Germany. Now they're going to apply the pressure. They're, they're pretty confident that they can really make this uh, low point pass. A and there we go again. So that actually works out as an advantage to Germany because instead of being able to use the baseline, you're trapped in that corner, and so is the guy that you're throwing to because you have a low point player that can't throw quite as far. So we have another equipment timeout. Absolutely, and coaches will emphasize, and they'll say, you know, the baseline, the sideline, treat that as another player, as another defender. Smart teams will, will, will do that. So much for not being able to pass far. That was yeah. a great bump, yeah. right? Well, what would I know, eh? So add in, as they would say in tennis, um, Brazil with, you know, the advantage because they, when they score, it always puts them up, and Germany always puts them at a tie. Exactly. Until we have a turnover. Look, but one turnover will change that in a heartbeat. That's, and that's the, the beauty of this game. Anything's going to happen. Pressure coming on. Feitosa smacks it. And he was out of bounds. you got to love it, eh? The player goes, puts his arms out, says, Riff, Riff, seriously? Shakes a little shake of the head. That's all she had to look at was that line <laughs> in his chair. So she probably got that oh, right. She, she got it right, all right. Absolutely she did. But look at the player. Look, no, no, no. <laughs> he, he, had, he was on the, the left wheels at the time. But I, his, his caster had crossed before he picked up two. Germany with the chance to tie it up. They do. So here we go. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Which team is going to crack? Which defense is going to be better than the offense? And this is why these games are not run back to back. Because if there is an overtime or two, we've got enough time to make that happen. And a turnover for Germany. Are we seeing the early signs of tiredness? Those two Brazilian 3.5s, they're pushing their proverbials off, working, 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 working. How far are they? Is there a problem here? None of the German ball handlers are working as hard on offense as Brazil is. They're methodical, they're pushing, but they're not, they're not at 100%. They're saving it for defense. And we've seen the advantage of having three sets of hands out there. So there's always that third option as opposed to just one option. We'll see two options as opposed to one option. And Kripke's a two. It's not that she can't handle the ball. She's two. Yeah. Oh, I take that back. She's a one. But she still can handle the ball. We see low pointers handle the ball all the time. Oh, absolutely. And they pass to her. Yeah, that was a very simple try. I think you'll, you would admit, Dave, that low point rugby is by far the most exciting rugby there is on the planet. <laughs> we have a league now in the U.S. Uh, <laughs> there last, you go. Last year won by Grand Rapids Thunder. Fantastic. Intercepted and across the try line and look at the excitement of Marco what? Erbst. Like it or not, Benoit needs to call a coach's timeout. Has he got a second lineup? Or is this it? Are they a one lineup pony? Because if he doesn't, then they're getting tired. Germany's now they're up by two. Uh, they have the arrow. So theoretically, if they score last, that's an extra uh, try, an extra point. So it's reversed from the end of the first quarter. What can Brazil do? What can Benoit say to try and get them to refocus, reset? and come back. Just two and a half minutes left in the first. Brazil will get an easy inbound this time as Germany sets up in their key. So now we get to see how good that key attack really is against the set key defense. Let's see what happens. Fantosa tries to draw the defense to the right. And I think we got four in the key. What is that? I'm not sure I've seen that signal before. So no one's going to the bin. 
position is still with Brazil. I didn't see what happened. Nope. Nope. Mystery to me. And maybe it was an inadvertent whistle and he just went to the side. Yeah. So again, Braz goes left. Feitosa goes right. Braz has the corner, but Feitosa able to back across. I'm wondering if Germany might think, yeah, there's a potential uh, turnover in our, in our defense. I think he called it uh, off offensive defense, uh, offensive key attack and uh, key defense rather. So let's see if they give another go. I think it's a mistake though, because then they're allowing the Brazilians to rest up. They need to be, keep full, pull, full court press, make them work, 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 and keep tiring them out. Herbst waiting. He knows the clock is his friend. He doesn't want to score yet anyway. Already thinking about getting that last try, managing the clock. So I think Brazil should make to that 55 second mark. That'll be hard to do. It's great to see the crowd get engaged, calling out. They could get it down to a minute. They choose not to, minute and a half left. I wonder how much Brazil have trained for this clock management, because uh, I know Ben has a lot to work on. I wonder how much they've worked on this. Content across half. Tremendous pressure there on number eight. Tremendous pressure, got the pass away safely. Minute 18 to go, still clock manager. Now, Roz trying to get around Herbst. And over the top it goes to Feitosa who will score quickly. I think Brazil are just looking to try to get turnovers to get that, but they've keyed up, so can't quite understand this. Although Germany will need to score in that 40 seconds. Germany has been doing a good job of breaking that press. Oh, very much so. Because they've got three sets of hands out there. So the call there is... Right, so it's, it, this is court? danger time now. So we've got a high pointer in the bin. They'll look to, to score the goal and trap that player in there. Force that person to inbound. They should then double the other high pointer. Single, single on the two lows. It's all about denial of the ball from the inbound. And with the man advantage, they'll want to score quickly so that they can guarantee themselves another possession. Absolutely. So the Germans, they're just going to... Unless they're that. going to use a timeout. Oh. I, um, I guess their magic number isn't 55 or 52, it's 49. So rather than the low down here, we need a high point down on this low point, huh? Feitosa sees the pass is there. He's just got to be able to get out of his lap. And Braz takes it across with 39 seconds left. So now in an ideal world, Germany would look to score last. Another equipment called. For people watching at home, the, the clock is critical in these last one and a half to two minutes. It, it, you combine the clock with the directional arrow as to who's going to take the ball first at the start of the next quarter, who scores last. Those maths, those two-point swings either way in a tight game are the winning and the losing of the game. And, and it's very rare in a significant game, uh, a final, etc., that a team will score last every time. I know the New Zealand team did it in 2004, which pretty much gave them the goal 31-29. So it's very, very difficult to do, but, uh, you know, they managed it. And good teams will always work to do exactly that. Yep. So Germany with a try advantage and the clock on their side will try to score this last one, put them up by two and the possession arrow which would give them the ball at the beginning of the second half. Patiently trying to get things exactly where they want it. Braz is trapped up top. Germans counting down the clock. 
With seven seconds, that seems like a lot for the speed of Brazil. But they do have Braz trapped. And smartly, timeout called. Well, Is the that we equipment? Yeah, it's equipment. You hear that psh, tires going down, okay. you will. But Germany are not going to care. They're going to come down. They're going to leave one person high for the long inbound. They're going to deny the high point the ability to get the ball. Clock doesn't start till it touches a hand. Beethosa not looking for the ball. Braz throws it out. So now Germany, it's been touched, so they have to take it out at the far end. And they have 2.8 seconds to bring it back. Oh, look, they're just going to keep play safe. They're just going to pass it to one another, hold it for the two seconds. What is the safe play here? That's the safe play. Get it down court where nobody can play it. What I don't understand there, Dave, is why pass it? Such terrific speed. Just back himself. The player's up court. Set the picks for them. Sail over. I'm confident they can do a length of the court and pull. Well, he's in three quarters of the court in five, six seconds. Easy peasy. But we've got a real close game. There's two points in it. Jimmy have the ball to start the uh, third quarter. They'll be wanting to do same, same. Benoit needs to be thinking, how is he going to change it up? So we're going to take a 10-minute break here, and we will be back with the second half. So, Dave, what are your thoughts in terms of this game? Is it what you expected it to be so far? Absolutely. It's, it's, we expected a close game. We expected Brazil to have that level of intensity and Germany to have a, a more muted intensity, but methodical. And I, I feel like that's what it's been. Germany has been patient and grinding and waiting for those opportunities to create turnovers, whereas Brazil has been aggressive at, at that and... It's, it's been fun to watch. So we had Brazil potentially in the first quarter being able to go up by three points. They, they really made a hash of that. Then Germany has the opportunity to go up, and they, they will be up three points if they score from the inbound, which is theirs. How does that affect a team's psyche, their psychology of how that's working? How, how, how does that impact a team? Well, I think when, when you look at a team like Brazil... They did not expect to be in this game today, right? They came here with goals, and they exceeded their goals. So, the, I, of course, they're excited that the opportunity to go to Paris. But they're in this game. It's not like we're, they're down by five, and they have this huge hill to climb. Down by three, that's a surmountable lead. Yes, it is. We need to look, though, at the depth. So, some of the, you know, a few teams really will only rely on four, five, maybe six players, and in a tight game where it's fast and furious, lots of hits, that will take its toll in terms of their fitness and their ability to make decisions under pressure. What do they say? Defin definition of high performance, being able to do the basics under pressure. So how does what does Brazil do now to counter what's been happening with Germany? So I think they need to go back to what was their winning formula. I think they need to cut out these Hail Mary passes where they're trying to almost replicate Japan there. They don't need it. They've got speed to burn. Their two highs can go past any German player that they want to. And they need to remember there's 12 seconds to get the ball over half. That is a lifetime. So we see them mad dash to, to get down. Just turn back. Come back round. Get a good view of the court. Where is it? Use your low points for blocks. And remember, the thing about scoring, there's two parts. Part one, get it over half. Part two, score the try. Do part one first. You know, what I don't see from Brazil that I've seen a lot this weekend is high pointers picking and rolling. I don't see uh, Braz and uh, Feitosa doing the pick and roll very often. And I feel like that could be, especially with the speed they have, if they can both stay loose up high one of them will get down there, right? When you do that pick and roll, there's always, 
it almost always ends up in a mismatch or somebody somebody makes the wrong call and two go to one and the other ends up alone. And somebody is going to get down there. And look, the, the other key thing here is patience. Just be patient. I mean, they're down by two. I mean, job one first, deny the Germans that point, which should be theirs from the inbound. Deny that. Cause a turnover. Both teams will have two of their team timeouts. They get out of jail timeouts. And, of course, Germany have got their two coaches' timeouts. So really, for Brazil, get Germany to use those so then any issue that requires a timeout becomes a turnover. You know, that, that first try, or the first inbound at half and at the quarters is at half court. So you don't have to get all the way to half court, right? That whole 12-second fight to get across half court is taken out. It's an easier try, in theory. And so we're talking so about. So when you win that, I think that's, there's a big oh, a momentum shift. Yes, there is. And of course, so don't forget, so they've had 10 minutes. 10 minutes for those two highs to get some air, to get a bit of the old sustenance, a bit of the old juices that's going to enable them to go, to have a little thing about things, talk tactics. Not necessarily with the coach, but with each other. Because they're a unit, and that's the critical thing. Understand, get back on the same page, uh, involve their low point players in terms of those picks, etc. I, I am a little, I'd like to see them actually change the inbound up. Because even though you'd say, well, the high pointer would get doubled on the baseline, great. You're playing three on two with a three five who's got wheels to burn with two picking chairs out there to um, block it. And your inbound should be safe. And, and But not only that, change it up. Three inbounds like that, three inbounds. So don't let the Germans know what's going to happen. Try and throw the defense off. Once in a while, have a high pointer inbound. But you know, we we talk, We've been talking about the fitness and the the intensity and the tiredness of this Brazilian team. But lest we forget, that German team has been working their butts off too. They're they're unmat they're outmatched speed wise, and they're having to push hard. And as as while it does not look as frantic and intense. They are, they are working equally as hard, and I'm sure that this 10-minute break is just as welcome for those four. Well, I think it is, but it's about the load. So the load is shared amongst three high-pointers for Germany and two with Brazil. And over time, that's going to tell. And I think we can see having that, that second pair of hands to receive, that's got Germany out of jail a number of times. And let's not underestimate the German point five, uh, sorry, one-pointer, uh, probably playing as a, as a point five. She has got good hands. She's comfortable. She's not phased. Don't be surprised to see her play a role if she needs to. And just while we're on that, again, if we've got any potential athletes watching who happen to be female, don't think this is a male-only sport. No. Please get involved wherever you are around the world. Go to your clubs or find your nearest club. Have a go. Settle in. I'm sure you can be just as devastating as any male player. And, you know, we welcome... Males, females, and the don't know. We're I've played with some great female players, and I, I've had as many as three on my team. Um, you know, it's this sport is for everybody. If you've got a disability that that uh, you know classes you in, uh, we want we want to see you play. And actually, there are a lot of people who come who end up not being able to play in the Paralympic version of the sport. There are other variations, but. Also, just being at a practice and pushing once a week is super helpful to the team, and it's, it's really fun. And, look, I want to give a big shout-out to Christine Smith, former New Zealand, uh, Will Black, uh, terrific Paralympian in terms of track, etc. A great athlete, a great example of a female that more than held her own against the boys, and that's a big challenge I put out to the, to the girls, the women, the ladies out there. Come and play. A minute and a half until we get back to action here. This is a much longer break. It used to be five minutes. I, I know that as a player, by the end of five minutes, I'm ready to get back out there. When I, when I played in coach, it was five minutes. I'm not sure what we'd be doing for 10 minutes, really. Probably have a cup of tea. You have to stay warm. We had an award ceremony in the middle of a game once. 
and uh, it lasted like 25 minutes or 30 minutes. And I was so ice cold afterward, it was a championship game. That wasn't fun at all. <laughs> all right, cheers to try and get the teams ready to go here. Already jockeying for position with 40 seconds left until we start. The referee will wait until that clock expires. And here we are, the second half of the World Wheelchair Rugby Paralympic Qualifying Tournament. The bronze medal game, everything at stake here. Not just a medal, but a ticket to Paris. Look, that I care about the medal, I want the ticket to Paris. We have the Brazilian team that probably never thought they'd have this opportunity, and now they're here in a very calculated German side, very well polished, just countering that Latin American flair. Well, both teams earned their place here, both getting to this tournament and being in this game. And either clearly deserving as we see the, these teams battling it out. Germany's first blood in the second half. Beethosa with the pass. I think that was to Kauto, but... It just looks as though the Brazilians are just a little flat. Uh, start, they, they can't afford to be flat. They need to be on their game right from the word go. They're now down to just one uh, team timeout left. The scoreboard will change soon. There it is. Weersman did a good job of corralling that because a turnover at that point would have really hurt from a mental perspective. With that Latin American temperament, though, I think if they, Brazilians, can score a couple of good goals, get a couple of uh, turnovers, watch their tails go up. Beitosa looks to pass, pulls it back down. And now Germany, late on their inbound, Ruff puts the ball down, starts at 10 second clock. Hilke. Gets it across half, but he has not been as much involved in the try scoring as he has been trying to get that ball across half. Been a lot of Herbst and Vecchi. So they did the first job. They got the ball over half, then they reset up. Turned out to be, once the hard work was done, a very simple try. Braz and Feitosa both looking over the top. For people watching the sport, the way the clock would work there, once the ball has been inbounded, uh, they have 10 seconds for it to be touched. So while you do a bunt, how many seconds are being taken up and the player trying to get it? And that's, that clock, that 10 second clock starts when the ref blows the whistle and hands the ball to the player. Yeah, good so point. So it could be in his lap for five seconds and in the air for five seconds, and that 10 seconds happens really fast. Don't reach. Whatever you do, don't reach. You've got them under pressure. Don't give them the easy out by reaching. He's got them trapped on four sides. Two lines and two players. And there we see the benefit. Three pit sets of hands out there. An easy uh, out, an easy um, offload to another good set of hands. Simple try. Quick inbound to Braz, but he's trapped against the line. Feitosa just works his way under. Down goes Vilki. And because he's close to the play, they're going to stop that. Also, Feitosa turned away from the, the goal or the try line. And of course, the shot clock will reset because that wasn't a disadvantage to, uh, you know, wasn't the doing of the Brazilian team. So why should they be penalized for that? Vilke getting his hand up and reaching out is what ended up being his demise. Beethosa and Braz both very close. And we have 10 no touch as we just talked about. Took him too long to get that ball in. It's got to touch a player. It doesn't have to touch an offensive player. It just has to touch a player. I don't understand why Benoit doesn't switch it up 
and have a high point in that. I know people are going to say yes, but the high point is doubled on the side, on the baseline. Who cares? You're playing three on two with a, with a speed machine. And a pair of pickers to defend him. Certainly an option. What we don't know is if he's tried that in, play, in practice and found that it wasn't effective. And of course, you know, we talked about the 10 seconds it happens. I talk about Vilke not being involved in try scoring and he scores. At the end of the day, Dave, we're just commentators. Oh. oh. Knocked out of his lap, but it went off the hand of the defender. And Brazil will get the ball back. What's really dangerous is sometimes when the ball gets flicked out, the tendency is to go and reach it and just touch it. And that could have been a turnover. So that's great. Great defensive work. Wiersma getting a tire exchange. I'm not sure why Firestone don't sponsor this or one of those big tire companies. Seriously? We have a tire company that uh, is involved with USA Rugby now. I believe it's Bridgestone. They're making rubbers for the hands. Oh, wow. Yeah, pretty amazing. That's very cool. Yeah. And we need to acknowledge, too, the innovation and technology that goes on within the sport, the design of the chairs. One of the great manufacturers is uh, from New Zealand, Melrose Chairs. They've been making uh, rugby chairs since the sport started. That is a turnover. Feitosa is just couldn't believe it. We're looking at pressure here, Dave. We're really looking at pressure. The Germans applying the blowtorch. The uh, Brazilians need to respond. Germany ever patient. Finding a way out. And finding a way in. Hilke. Now looking for a pass. Both high pointers for Brazil on him. And once he gets rid of the ball, they both left him. Yep. And Herbst was able to take advantage of that. So Germany out to a five goal lead. The arrow is with Brazil. But that mountain's just got a little bit steeper. And another over the top for Brazil. Uh, just out of uh, screenshot, we have one of the German players down on the ground, not having a rest. Would have been tipped out or gone over a wheel. Obviously nothing bad because the referees haven't called it. That'll be Herbst. There are 3-5. Only 3-5 on the German roster. Whereas Brazil is running those two 3-5s with the point fives. Braz and Feitosa. I can't emphasize just how the, the rise of the 3.5 trunk players has really changed the face of the game. And they do dominate. And they are spectacular. But at what cost are some of those mid-range players getting caught on? You can't discount the value that those point fives bring to that lineup, though. The, the picks being set, the, the defensive struggle they create, Kripke will just watch that one go by. And that was two low pointers working under pressure, getting the ball off to the high pointer. Brazil still down by four and a possession. As Herbst works his way around the corner. Vilke is there. Doesn't need it. And you see number five, Alex Taniguchi. For Brazil's out on the floor. And if you don't need to pass, don't pass. Because passing, there's always that element. Lost concentration, what's happening here? And another turnover. So now Benoit needs to make a decision. Does he go, the game's out of reach, so I'm gonna put some bench players on to give them critical experience? Or does he go, no, no, I'm going to still go for the win. It's a, it's a big call to make. Probably no right or wrong answer there. 
So that change they made, Taniguchi's only a 2-5, so they're able to put out a 1-5 as well. And that would be Camargo, number nine. So it changes the lineup a little bit. It's not so heavy to the two players because Camargo will handle the ball, but he also has that picker on the front of his chair, number nine. And that's why he was able to get it out before. I'm surprised he didn't try and hang, hang on to Kripke as she went around that corner. Herbst Great to has what he needs. At the beginning, we talked about that Patience, precision from the Germans. No fuss, just do the job right, apply the pressure, and wait for the right time. Taniguchi, number five. Off the picker of Feitosa, that little basher bar. Does not bounce the ball in the direction you want it to go. So we're starting to see a bit of panic creep in here. Really, that was a simple little bar, uh, bounce pass or just a straightforward pass. Well, and the real damage here is going to be that the frustration, the mental side of this. If Brazil can't overcome that, then we're just going to keep seeing more of that. Put a sloppy play there, but recovered well. There was nobody there to, to pick up that loose ball from Brazil. So Germany picks it back up and... I think we're going to see Germany maybe do a bit more uh, key defense. It does wind the clock down. Feitosa struggling. And there the foul. Herbst will go sit in the penalty box. Always a great picture when the ref calls a, nope. a foul, a That'll reach. Vilke who ends up in the box, number five. Vilke, they look up at the ref with those puppy dog eyes saying, well, it's me, ref. Herbst I mean, reacted like he couldn't, he, it was him. Yeah. Like, what did you call that on me for? <laughs> so how do they, see, why, why not now get the, progress the ball over court, right? Just hang on to it, get your two low pointers to force the inbound. Here we go. Feitosa doesn't even wait no. for his defense to get set up. He just wants to get that try on the board. 41-35, three and a half left in the third. Milky crosses half. Taniguchi on him. Camargo as well. Herbst catches the pass and will take it across. So when a high point uh does that hit the stop? They need to keep pushing. They need to keep pushing the chair. Bang, 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 bang. Force that doubt. Force that uncertainty. Create the mistake. They don't need mistakes from anywhere. Faye Tosa will win that battle. Although Vilke there with him. That was great wheels by Wilkie. He really put some speed in there. But their tails are up. They're the happy bunnies here. <laughs> Don't reach. Taniguchi stops the chair. Almost intercepted there by Wiersma. Feitosa now under the play trying to get a jump. Vilki creates the foul by closing his arms over that ball. The referee looks in and says, yeah, there's contact there. So Feitosa will go out. So I don't know if the interpretation has changed at all, but they talk about a cylinder on your lap. You can't you can do anything you like in that cylinder. If someone reaches in it's to your vertical. cylinder, the big... Basically the shape of the ball straight up and down. So if you lift that ball and create contact, it'll be the defender that ends up going to the penalty box. And is it worth it? The shot clock's running down. You know, you've got them under pressure. Why do it? Why give well, them an easy goal? Easy he's try? trying to make something happen. Mm, Look, yeah. you have to admit that in our sport, we score far more often than we don't. True. And if you give up a try for our aggressive defense that occasionally brings a turnover, I'm okay with that. They say patience, protect the ball on offense, spend it on defense. Give it everything you got. Sometimes you gotta sell the farm and take a risk to try and intercept that pass in the passing lane or, or get the ball out of somebody's lap or get a jump. So you heard that wisdom here today from Dave. Take it away, use it people. Wisdom for the ages. 
I don't know if everybody agrees with me, but that's my theory. So Herbst will take it across for the 44th try for Germany. Slight change in tactics. The, you won't be able to see off, off screen, but one of the Brazilian high pointers was going to go really, really low to be that uh, receive, up a high receive. Not this time, though. Yeah, 3 5 2 5, one, five point five for Brazil. That makes eight. Taniguchi gets the try for Brazil. The minute 47. Brazil needs to get one here. The possession arrow is in the favor of Brazil, so they will get the first opportunity of the next quarter, assuming we don't have a held ball, a jump ball. Critical they score last. So they get that point, and then they build on it with the, um, with the inbound. Yes, that's definitely an opportunity for them to make one up here. Down goes Vecchi. I've got to say, I'm surprised the score is blown out how far it is in some respects. But again, we need to recognize just how well Brazil have done. They have done incredibly well, and they will absolutely be a force to reckon with certainly at the next Paralympic Games. They were up by three yep. early. Yep. So don't count them out. Another interception. Herbs will take his time. Faye Tosa does not want that to happen. Under a minute and a half, clock management comes in. For those of you at home watching, you get 40 seconds to score a try. You want to make it so that your opponent scores and gives you 5, 10, either 10 to 15 seconds so you can score last. Taniguchi crossed the line. Lots of pressure there from Herbst. He did not give up. Pushed him across. Out of bounds. It's interesting and with that particular call, uh, I believe you need to release and go again. If you just constantly push, that's yes. a pushing foul. So you need to be disciplined. You hit, come back. It's so long as there's a gap. The offensive player has to put up resistance. If yep. you don't try and stop it, they can keep pushing you. Yep. Vilki gets the pass from Kripke and over to Herbst, who will wait to score. And with 58, that guarantees them one more possession unless Brazil spends their final timeout to make sure they get it. I think given the players on court now for Brazil, Benoit is saying, right, I'm probably not going to win this. He won't need I'm to. He scores quickly. They'll get another possession. I'm talking about in terms of the full, the final goal. They put different players on. Yeah. I wonder if he's sort of going, right, probably not going to win it uh, because there's a big mountain to climb. But my players can get some real great experience for this. A little Help. bit of contact on that defensive stretch, but... Russ letting them play. Herbst gets one. And Brazil now with 38 seconds. And we want referees. What will they do? We want the referees to go with the advantage. Play, you know, let the game flow. The last thing you want is a stop start game when you don't really need to, unless one team's being more disadvantaged. There is a school of thought that you just score the try. And I believe that's what we're doing here. I gotta say, terrific hands. That ball was going like a rocket. Yeah. Plucked it out of the air. Terrific hands, but it doesn't look like he has either hand no. completely. Remarkable. Okay, here we go. Germany will take the other tactic and try and wind this clock down. Whereas Brazil is just put the try on the board, put yep. the try on the board, put the try on the board. And apply pressure. 49-50, Germany in the lead. And that is how we will end the third quarter with Germany so far ahead. We will be back in three minutes to see the final in this one. Well. So now what do they do? Yeah, now what <laughs> do they do? It's interesting, though, isn't it, Dave? I mean... 
I think we saw there that relentless pr pressure from the Germans, but I think we also witnessed some unforced errors and maybe some tactical errors at critical moments. Uh, particularly, I come back to the end of that first quarter. What sort of game would we see if Brazil had scored last, they'd scored first, but up by three, nearly four points? How would the Germans have responded to that? Obviously the same in terms of their relentless comeback, comeback, comeback. But it would have made a big difference. The, the big thing is that those players will go back over, watch the footage, and they'll come up against a very similar scenario, but they'll be the wiser for it. Well, they're probably going to watch this film multiple times. And, uh, you know, that attack, both offensively and defensively, of Brazil is more like being punched, whereas Germany is more like a vice. It's just constantly squeezing and squeezing out whatever they can get. And it's working for them. It has worked for them all week. We talk about technology. There is some terrific technology being used now around the video analysis, the, the software, the video. Uh, we're up on a, on a um, mezzanine floor looking down, and there are a range of phones, cameras. Yeah, every team has a camera crew. And a dedicated analysis. Even teams that aren't playing will, will film the game so that they have it to analyze for when they compete against the two teams that you see Absolutely. on the floor. Germany looks to be making a bit of a change here. I'm looking for a number so I can confirm. Looks like that would be, is that a six or an eight? There's no six. I think it's an eight. That, no, that's, that's not number eight. That's not Vecchi. He's on the other side. Six. If there is a six, I don't have him on my roster. Maybe that's Rydell. So we're about to start the fourth period of this bronze medal match between Brazil and Germany. Germany with the edge, 49-40. Though Brazil will start with the ball. Guillermo Camargo will inbound to Alex Taniguchi. It's about scoring quickly for Brazil now. If they want to have any chance here, they need to score quickly. Hoffman number eight in there with Taniguchi. As well as Nunez. Nunez is uh, number six who just scored that try. We also talked about the diversity with male and female. Plug out. We've got Christian Rydell out there, the point five for Germany. Bit of grey hair out there. You know, we don't have ageism in the sport either, so it's good to see. It does get hard to compete at this level when you get to a certain age, though. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm told. I was trying to be Not positive. I've done yeah. it, but... <laughs> hey, as long as you can beat out the guy that's trying for your job. It doesn't matter how old you are or what gender you are. So we've seen the Brazilian team put out a different lineup. We're probably going to see more turnovers now, and we need to focus or, or think of this as a glorified training camp for both teams now. Uh, that was a great fight. Could have gone either way. The Germans have, have got ascendancy, so the coaches are going to look, what can we get out of this last quarter that's going to benefit the, for Germany? So they want to reverse that one-point loss, I believe, they had to Denmark. So they need to be good for that. For Brazil, they need to build up their, their squad depth. So they Which is longer. an impressive feat. Oh. Denmark has Denmark beat Australia at Worlds. Denmark has run some teams right up to the wire. France. Uh, so to come within one, I think that's, that says something about where Germany is going. And teams have their, their rise and fall. As players retire or move on, the teams need to rebuild and get better. And so your teams, you'll see teams, even the very top teams, have years or two or three years where they're not quite the dominant force they used to be because players can't play forever. Nunes. 
gets that try. Becky will inbound quickly to Rydell. Gets it back. And Herbst. Has had a great game and scores that try. Herbst has really been everywhere. His Offensively, he's scoring. He's making great passes. Defensively, he's picking off passes in the passing lane and creating turnovers. And in an ideal team, you want your players to play at a level half a point higher than their classification. And I would argue that he's really trying to do that. Shot well, clock's running down. Not much room to go up from a 3-5. And Brazil gets the try. Hoffman number eight for Brazil. And all the Brazilian players in a pile over Vecchi. They simply can't afford to do that because there's three sets, at least three sets of hands out there. It, you know, the ball will always travel faster than the player. I think just kind of Gucci couldn't push because yeah. his waxel was out. Yeah, yeah. He just kind of corralled him there so the low pointers could get him. And then he tried to get out and realized he couldn't, he couldn't push. Vilky trapped in the corner trying to fight his way out. He does. Ball advancing to half. Herbst reached in on there. Hoffman couldn't get it out. Great individual skill to progress the ball up. And you can see the energy of Hoffman, number eight for Brazil, having been much more rested. Yep. Uh, showing that intensity. Change up for Germany to bring another player on. And there's looks like a whole lineup change coming on for Brazil. So that's four players for four players. Looks like Braz came back, as does Kauto. The other players out there are number 12, Vitor, and I believe it's Simplicio, number four. Braz trying to beat Vilki. Just long enough for Vitor to get up court. And Vilki crosses for the penalty try. Light point inbound. A lot of jostling for position between the two, the defender and the offense. Great long ball. Sauerbier number 12 for Germany. Dodges Simplicio. A little tap there from behind by, uh, by Braz. Just a little welcome to the quarter. Someone needs to inbound. Now let's see what happens. Now we've got one of the three fives about to inbound. But they don't have the speed out there that they had earlier. Yeah, good point. And Braz mishandles the pass. He got hit as he caught it. Yeah. Credit to defense for that timing. And now Sauerbier looks to protect the ball. Try scored, Marco Herbst. So I think as we reflect back on this game, it, it promised a lot and it delivered in the first half. It, the, the score, uh, well, then we see the ball just being Missed communication. Yeah, yeah. So we look back at the game, promised a lot and delivered till half time. But I think the Brazilians tired and the Germans just kept on coming and kept on coming and they wore them down. It'll be a great lesson for Brazil going forward. And Brazil did make some mistakes that weren't necessarily forced errors. And those will come back to haunt you as well. Although that last one I would say was assisted by the German defender who turned the chair of Vitor away from where the ball was going. 
So not as proficient at attacking the key. A, the ball went into the low point hand. Germany has called a timeout. That's the safe bet. It's, it's harder to get out of your lap when you don't have tricep muscles, when you don't have necessarily wrist muscles to help you get that ball out. You'll see a, a low pointer with the ball get swarmed because they know how hard it is to get it out. And if you can keep it there, you can get 10 no dribble or create a turnover. Take it right out of his lap. And we haven't spoken about the dribble, so athletes need to dribble the ball, bounce it on the ground every 10, before 10 seconds is up. So if you've got a low pointer who's got the ball, who's surrounded and can't dribble, they either call a timeout or it's a turnover. So after the penalty try, that penalty because Simplicio was pushed off the court, I believe. Bumped off the court. We say push, but the push foul is about so using brute strength against resistance. So in the first half, I'm not sure we saw any substitutions. Now they're coming thick and fast. And this really just about reading the writing on the wall at this point. Yeah. Vitor turns back, looking to reestablish the play and his teammates didn't follow him, so is that Sauerbeer who crossed? And he did it straight away, so he, he was right beside. Braz. Goal scored quickly, so they can really go again. Again, didn't, oh, he's been, no, he's been set to the bin. So that's the deem that the try was going to be scored. The ball handler had not made an advance toward the try line, so... He will serve the penalty rather than getting a penalty try. See uh, Masha Mosel in there for Germany, number 24. She had some good minutes in their last game. It's great to see these athletes uh, getting some good court time, some quality court time. And even just experience the fact they're playing at a major international event with spectators with all the bells and whistles, bells and whistles of cameras, officials, classifiers, that in itself is an experience. Yeah, and against some of the top teams in the world. Oh, absolutely. That German machine, it just keeps rolling on, doesn't it, eh? Relentless. The I'm Panzer sure. attack. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure we've got anyone from the original German starting lineup. I'm not. Maybe one. Maybe uh, number eight. Number eight. Yeah, Vecchi's still out there. Oh, no, Vilki's out there too. It, it's great to see that in a world, uh, wheelchair rugby world dominated by 3.5 trunk players, that some of those mid range players can have a massive impact. Sauerbeer trying to get it out. He does to Vilki. And Vilki content to grind a few more seconds off that clock. I wonder, given the timeouts available, whether they will use them and try and run some special plays. So Braz elects to inbound. Vitor takes it and tosses it over the top. They're still keen to press. The Germans still want to press. They want to keep... The Brazilians now want to keep players down the far end, or they've really just sort of given up on that. Well, they're not going to let Braz take one off the baseline like that too many times before they start stopping him as he comes in. Good composure by Marsha there. She's being really harassed big time. Timeout called. So she's a 2-5. I don't know if they need to pull her out, but... well. I think they're being over precautious myself. Leave her with it. Let, you know, let it, let experience that. Get out of jail. Figure out what she needs to do. How's she going to learn? So, lining it up from the sideline here is Sour Beer.
Bilky being patient. Braz trying to get in there. No. And Mosel takes it across for her first try of the match. Still throwing the kitchen sink in it, still trying everything. Mosel trapped on the baseline down there. Simplicio will not let her off that baseline. No. She needs to be careful because she could get 10 seconds in the key. So she has to get off that pick. She doesn't know to turn her chair the other way. And that's it, 10 in the key. One thing for sure is I'd like that, to show her the trick. And we look at it, so they called their last time out. Mm -hmm. And yet if they just waited, Marsha could have called that time out to get out of jail. Great work and awareness of the low to do it and hold it. Hold her. Germany brings Herbst back out. Along with Bond Guard, number 21. Simplicio. Perfectly weighted pass there. Oh, sorry, that was Kauto. My bad. Simplicio is up top working on Herbst at this point. Trying to keep him from getting over the top. That was pretty tough for the low pointers to get a try. He'll want to claim that one. Well. Oh. He was up on one wheel. There had to have been some contact to create enough force to pull that. And just because someone comes out of the chair doesn't mean that a foul has been committed. It's about momentum. Uh, well, I think we saw yeah. one. Barton Cooch just rode Herbst, right up on a wheel. Herbst lifted him over. <laughs> if you just watched that. He, he got under his elbow and just kind of lifted him up. Just gave it a hand, eh? You can't deny there's contact in that situation. And again, because it's inside the cylinder and the player did not take his hands off the ball. If you take your hand off the ball to clear that guy out, that, then it's a foul on the offensive player. But because he kept his hands on the ball, we will see Vitor in the penalty box. I think they're just being friendly. It's the wheelchair equivalent of holding hands. What I'm liking here is that the German team is still looking to run certain plays, to do certain roles. They're not just content to run with the win. They want to see what they can do. They force the high pointed inbound. Now they're looking to trap the other high pointer up and cause that mismatch. Well, they're playing rugby. They're playing good rugby. That's what they. That's what got them here. They shouldn't stop. Oh, absolutely. And because it's a newer lineup, a, a less experienced lineup, it's great for them to practice. Over the top. Vitor goes after it, but Vilke beats him. Let up court by Bruckner. Lovely pass. And Herbst at the cone gets it. Okay, so I think we could be looking at a flagrant now, surely. Smack from behind so hard. Well, it was a technical for sure. So while we talk about crash and bash and violence, etc., there are st still significant rules around safety because when someone goes over backwards hard, hits the head on the floor, that's going to hurt no matter what, what sport you're playing. So brain you see injuries, the brain injuries are forever. Yeah, I see. You. And and the thing is, it was unnecessary. The try was about to be right. scored. It didn't need to happen. He was caught unawares. Never saw it coming. So Vilki was set the penalty. And. Brazil turns it over despite the man advantage. They'll try to get it back here. Does not want to foul. And they call that a held ball. You gotta love interpretation, really. But the referees are close, way closer than the cameras are. They can see exactly what's happening, and they call what they see in front of them. Herbst is very good, though, at, at getting those arms up to create that contact when the man gets his hands inside. So substitution, one low for another. So there is no beginning of the next quarter, so possession arrow only matters for the inbound of 
the play. You gotta love this low pointer. He's, he's gonna, he, he doesn't care about the three-five, the reputation. Bongard wants to get it back to Herbst, but can't. Braz over the top to Vitor. And while it took a long time, Brazil was able to get their power play goal. Or try. I'm impressed that wasn't a flag run. It was unnecessary, it was dangerous. But there you go, interpretation by the referees. I think if it hit his head on the picker, it would have been a flag run. Yeah. You could see by Vilke's reaction that he didn't intend to do that. I mean, he almost said oops. Yeah, good, uh, good luck with that, Dave. I think he was trying to be nice there. I think he knew exactly what he was and doing. And Braz had a chance to retaliate there as he came in the back of the chair of Vilke, but wise choice not to because that would have definitely been a flagrant. And good sportsmanship. Pressure's on right to the end. I'm loving it. They've Turnover. won the game. Five, under five seconds to go. They're still putting pressure on. These, this is great learning experience. Setting up, ready to go. 62-50, our score. Brazil, you don't get many opportunities in the game to try this play, so they're going to take a shot at it. And I'm, it's going to be a goal, I'm telling you now. Or not. And the ball bounces off the hands of Herbst. Brazilian Four ball. Four seconds remain, and now Brazil will take over. Well, Dave, I'm not sure I've caught anything so far this game, so... I'm on a zero for zero. But you're trying. Oh, <laughs> and God loves a try. So we'll finish this game 62-50, and Germany wins the bronze medal. But more importantly, Germany will be playing in the Paralympics in August, competing with the top eight teams in the world. Two of those will compete later today, Australia and Canada. But our next game, Dave, New Zealand versus the Netherlands, a repeat from the very first game of the tournament. It's a rematch, an opportunity for New Zealand to answer the call. Well, it's about redemption, I think, and showing what they can do. But this Dutch team is a very good team, and you underestimate them at your peril. They came out kicking and screaming and really took advantage of New Zealand's just unawareness of of them and yeah they, they they took it to them so i think this rematch is going to be a much better game uh, um, i'm looking forward to seeing it i'm so looking forward to it and if you're in low hut for goodness sake come down and watch support the kiwis they're going to need all the support you can give them and then stay on and watch the gold medal game two of the great teams in wheelchair rugby so the the traditional handshake after the game this is we do this after every rugby match at every level of play. It's great as they come back to their own teammates. There's some really big hugs going with the German team. They know what it means. They've got their ticket. They're off to Paris. This is the gold medal game as far as they're concerned in terms of this tournament. They certainly won the day. And credit to Brazil as well. They came out fighting. They, they looked great at the beginning had some mistakes and just the relentless pressure of Germany ends up being the decider. Germany it, now, what are they doing? They're hanging out waiting for something. Oh, they're thanking the table. Those volunteers that run the clock and the people that referee and classify and run these tournaments, I mean, from camera work to transport food, tra food everything yeah exactly you know, organization of just all, all those things it's it's all a very major thing going on behind the scenes you've got eight teams of usually 12 players five staff so 17 18 people from uh, eight different countries language barriers different times flying in it's all a lot to manage so we really appreciate all of the volunteers and all of the people, both paid and unpaid, who support this sport so that we can play it. And uh, I think that's going to be goodbye from me and goodbye from you in a minute as we wait for the mics. So we now will speak with Alex Taniguchi from Brazil, who is down there with Jai.
Uh, uh, disappointment? Yeah, disappointment. Uh, but we did our best. Uh, I'm very proud of everybody. Uh, thanks to the coach, the staff, and congratulations to Germany. They did not just a good game today, but they did a great tournament. So congratulations to them. I think our team has a lot of room to improve, a lot of new new players. So some new players at home didn't come. So I think we need to still keep working and maybe next time. Okay, well, go out and we'll see you next time. Well said. I think the significant comment there was, we have a number of new players back home. We're going to grow them. One of my terrible predictions, but watch out for them in Los Angeles. I think you might see one of the South uh, South American teams really dominate them, not just because they're hosts. So that is their goal. Is yeah, absolutely. And, you know, like we said before, the, they didn't expect to have the opportunity to play in this game. And... They're, they're greatly disappointed that they weren't able to win it. But they are looking at their future, and I think their future is bright. I'm hoping we'll get a comment from the German team, uh, which I suspect will be just pure joy and delight. But uh, they're in a huddle in the, in the center. They're celebrating, and they've got their flag up. They're, they are the happy bunnies. They are really excited. They know they're going. But it's going to be up another level when they hit Paris. All the big guns are in town, and it's going to be a great tournament. And Germany hasn't been to the Paralympics for quite a while, so this is a big deal for them. I've seen them in, the, in world championships, but that's a 12-team tournament. So we're still standing by. They're still celebrating and acknowledging just what they've achieved, which is, which is huge. Uh, but I'm sure at some point, young Jai will be able to secure uh, some comments because it's always great to hear from the, the winning teams. And that roar you hear and you see, is that the German team? Oh, they love it. Rugby Deutschland. Um, I'm thinking party time. They're heading to Paris. Party time in Lower Hut for the well, German team. At the, at the end of the tournament, the night after the tournament completes, there's always a banquet and a celebration for all the teams. And I expect Germany is going to live it up. I'm looking forward to all the camaraderie between players. Uh, and, and it looks like Jai is going to try and go out and steal himself an interview. But uh, probably unlikely they are deep so in their celebration. Dave, just want to say it's been a real pleasure commentating with you. Good luck with your own career up and back in the States. <laughs> thank and, you. Uh, thank yes, you, so you too. Grant, it's been, uh, it's been great. I will be back with you guys for the final game. Uh, but next up, we have the Netherlands and New Zealand in about an hour. See you then.